Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Catherine, I'm a teacher in Bedfordshire and today I wanted to just talk about interviews and that whole process. So as most of you may know, I have recently got a new job, so I've recently had an interview and gone through that whole like recruitment process and when I was on Instagram, some people said that they wanted a video about interviews and stuff. So I thought that's appropriate, I've just had one, why not? Um, I rarely do these kind of videos, so if this is a bit messy, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna do my best. So what I wanna to talk to you about today is where you can go to look for jobs, and um, that might be different depending on where you are, but I'll try. Um, how to write your application, I'm checking my notes now. Interview process, what I just want to be lesson, and then just little chunks of advice. So yes, stick around for that. Right, so where I look for jobs. Um, this is gonna be tricky because it's gonna be different for different people, but I'm just gonna share what I do and then hopefully that can help somebody. So there are the places you can go for like general jobs. Indeed, Monster, TES Jobs has a few for teachers as well. But a new one that I heard of at my school is My New Turn. It's kind of like, it's hard to think of like a pool system where you just put all your details in on the CV and then some head teachers exclusively hire from that website. I know that there's a few where I am that exclusively go to that website to hire. So they will go in and just see if teachers are around looking for a job and then they'd contact you. I didn't get a job through that, so I haven't got much more information about that, but I will link it in the description. I will put the website up here. I will just bombard you information so you can find out yourselves. But yeah, I did like the look of it. It did look very helpful, but I just didn't get a job through that. So what I use is my, my town's local council website. So I'm assuming that most towns will have a council website and there's a section for jobs and it's got jobs in schools. So it's got teaching assistant, administrative roles, um, I can't think of anything else right now, <laughs> but it's got like any job in school. So I went to the teacher section and it's got all jobs in a, all through primary, secondary and special schools. And I just stalked the primary part of it until I found something I liked the look of. And then I applied. So the reason I applied for this school is that um, location is a really big thing for me because I don't drive at the moment, I need to be able to get to my school, otherwise I'm going to be through a lot of stress and just spending money to try and get to work, to then earn money to work, which is stressful in itself. But also I needed somewhere that had a big push on wellbeing and most importantly was a council school. So when I was looking for my school I decided that I needed somewhere that was you know, big on well-being, with support mental health, and have given that bit of freedom. So I made sure that I did let that, like, was made that known in my application, but we'll get there in a second. So on the school website, I just um, found the application process. I emailed the school for application pack. I just said I'm emailing to register my interest and requesting application pack. They sent it over, I filled it in, I sent it back. Like I said in my update video, it's a very quick process. Um, the closing date was on a Monday. I finished applying on a Sunday before, sent it off at like midnight, and then called it a day. But um, let's talk about what's in my application. Okay, so my application form. Like I said, I applied through the council website, and schools that come through the council website have got the same form. It's actually very helpful. So you've got your, your general information, name, age, address, date of birth, blah, blah, blah. Then employment, no, education, like all your GCSEs, A-levels, degree, all that stuff. And then your employment history. So all of your jobs in chronological order from most recent to, you know, least recent. Lucky enough to have an application form that is standard. Keep that part. It's never going to change. It's going to add bits on. Um, the last part then was the supporting statement, which was just like a whole A4 part of just why you want this job. This is my favourite thing ever to write. And while I was avoiding the application because I had very low self-esteem, so I was finding it really hard to write that, once I started writing it, it just went. I love writing. I just get very poetic for no reason. The beginning paragraph was a comparison between me, Miss Honey and Miss Trunchbull, which to this day I find hilarious. Um, but yeah, it was fun to write. Um, the last part is just a declaration 
of convictions so you know I have no convictions or I have some let me know now and then my signature so that's my application um, okay so after I applied I sent my application off I did have to do a cover letter which I've not done before so I just googled covers templates and then adapted it for what I needed it to be I will google and find what I need I used there and pop in the descriptions but after I applied the turnaround was pretty quick so I applied um, the Sunday night closing was Monday 12 o'clock I got the email for invite to interview Monday after you after school it came through on my watch I was very excited I was mid conversation when I saw it and just screamed and then ran it was a good time um but that was when the real work began because I got the email it said that the interview was on Thursday and I was teaching a year five lesson on decimals now I've taught year five before so they're not too bad but the thought of teaching year five in another school with kids I don't know after teaching year three all this time was a bit um so the first thing I did was go to year five and speak to someone there about maths um decimals how they would do it and just get some help I was really lucky because the person that I spoke to was also applying for a different job and she sent, she was so great, she sent over everything she used for her interview. So she sent over her smart paper that she did, she sent over the worksheets she made, the extra challenges that she made, the lesson plan she wrote up for it, just everything. And it was so helpful to help me to do my interview lesson, which I'll talk about another time because I've recorded this twice already. So. Um, the next thing I had to do after that was obviously let my school know that I had an interview. So I did just email my, who did I email? Who did I email? The deputy head who was my mentor, just because I was more comfortable telling her um, to say that I had an interview on this day and I won't be here. I initially thought that to ask for the day off, but there is no asking when you have an interview. It's just, I have an interview, I will not be here. Don't take my word for that. Please find out from your school how you need to handle that if you're in the situation. Talk to a phrase leader or a teacher who's been in the profession longer than you have. But if I did just say, it, I won't be here, get come for Thursday. That was easy for me because my deputy knew I was applying for jobs. She's the one who had a mock interview with me the Tuesday morning when we found out um, about it. She had a mock interview for me. Um, she's so lovely. Um, and my school also let me practice my interview lesson with year five. Um, so they were really, really supportive of me. They are, they were, were very aware that I wasn't happy where I was. Um, but yeah, my interview, so I got a structure for the day and it is hand in my documents, interview first, interview lesson, goodbye. So I was very prepared for my interview. Like I said, um, the school let me practice my lesson with year five so the day no no we're going to talk interview first and then the lesson ignore me okay so interview um i hand in my documents um this is going to be some advice that no one needs to hear it's fairly obvious but find your documents before you need them because i was so prepared and so focused on getting the lesson ready i forgot the documents and it wasn't until i was sat outside my house waiting for my taxi feeling really good about myself that i remembered I haven't got any of my documents. I had to run into my house in my shoes, in my heels, um, and try and hunt down my documents. So what you generally need is proof of address, ID, and your qualification certificates. But yeah, I had to get all my documents ready. So I handed those in, I did luckily find them, and some other stuff, handed that in, and then have my interview. So they brought me into the little, the little office for interview. Um, there's obviously COVID restrictions, so I have a mask on in the like general area, but in the office because they're, they're comfortable and be taking off, so I did. Um, and then the questions began. So this is where I would like to offer some advice on questions and like what I answered, how I prepped for them, but honestly I did not. I was so stressed and busy getting the lesson ready that I forgot about the questions part of the interview. Um, so yeah, I didn't do loads of prep. I didn't like meticulously go over answers and practice and write things down. Um, even the mock interview I had with my deputy head, she didn't really ask questions. She just said like, 
these are some things that would come up to so start thinking about how you answer this question or this or this and it was things like safeguarding which always comes up behavior management um so that buzzwords at the moment are progress how you're gonna push children on how you're gonna bridge the gap those sorts of things so and every intention of practicing these questions i just completely forgot and did not so in my interview i was asked things about behavior i was asked about what I thought was my best ever lesson and um, the biggest challenge I faced this year. I was asked about safeguarding, which you are always going to be asked. But yeah, that's how that hey. went. Interview lesson. Um, yes, so after my interview, I then went to my interview lessons. I was taken over to the classroom I'll be preparing in. Um, my lesson was a mess, a mess. Um, like I said, I practiced it on a year five class. I got some advice from um, the maths lead and a year six teacher about my lesson, and I changed it based on their advice. So I originally had, um, okay, from the top. So I did comparing and ordering decimals because to me that's like the most fun you can do. With comparing and ordering decimals, it's easy to see, okay, three is bigger than two, this one's bigger. And the children would have learnt that. So I checked against um, the White Rose medium term plan and saw that they would have already learnt that. So it's a recap lesson. It's always best to teach a recap than a new skill because you know the kids or what they know or anything like that. So just do a recap of what they know. If you need to, well, you always, you always can email the school and say, hey, I'm thinking of doing this. Can you let me know what the children already know to inform my planning? Perfect, do that. So I did comparing ordering decimals which was similar to the lesson plan that my friend sent me which was comparing and ordering fractions it worked out quite nicely um i originally planned to show them some decimals um in pictorial form so with place value charts and counters had them look at the numbers we can clearly see which ones more or less because we can see the counters okay you could have a go here some decimals use draw the counters in and tell which one's bigger Okay, now do it abstract. So here's some numbers, here's some decimals. Look at them, which one's bigger. If you still use pictorial, go for it. If you don't, don't. Um, I know that my school used a red, amber, green system for challenges. So I included that in my planning. I made sure to print out any slides for anyone at the back, just in case someone sat at the back and can't see. I made sure that I had something they can write on, just in case they couldn't see. Um, and then came my favorite thing. Um, we played a game I just called it Rumble for the sake of the interview, but it's a game I play quite a lot with my kids. And with dice, so the children roll the dice three times, they get three numbers, they make a decimal, they compare with their partner, who's got more, who's got less, who wins. But they have to show the inequality, so, or. Um, the advice I got from my the people who checked my work was to get rid of the dice activity. They thought that dice are risky, kids can lose them, roll them, throw them. So it's best to take that out and just ignore it. So for my practice, I did take that out and did something different. I had like a maze as a challenge, but when I taught the lesson, I, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it. Um, the kids at my current school, they know me. I taught some of them when they were in year four. They actually, they, most of them knew me. I don't know how to be quite, it's weird when you teach them they know you, it's really weird. Um, but because they knew me, I, no, they were excited anyway because Miss Lewis is here. So I didn't have to kind of do loads, but for children who wouldn't know me, I wasn't feeling it. So after doing the practice lesson, I went back to our little area and I rejigged everything, I replanned. So I just ended up putting the dice activity back in. Um, I cut down some things that took too long because the kids took forever doing some things. So we had two um, lesson, two slides that were kind of similar. I just took one out, had an activity, took it out. I just had, this is how we're gonna compare them here. We're gonna order them here, done. We're gonna order them here, we're gonna compare them here, done. I made sure that I addressed both parts of my learning intention because the intention was to compare and order. So I had to compare and order. I made sure I had to explain things, I explained them if I missed some things in my practice. But I did put the dice system back in, which was fun for the kids. They um, they loved it. It was one of those moments I wish I could vlog because I was at the front of this classroom. I just, I don't know these kids, and they just saw the words rumble on the board, 
and then I started stretching dramatically and they were like she, she means business she's gonna fight us and I was like yeah I am get your dice kids let's go <laughs> so yeah they really loved that part and um, so yeah that was my <laughs> that was my lesson um my advice for that is um firstly play to your strengths so I knew that I could do something fun and I could control the fun. I knew that I wouldn't have kids throwing dice because why would they be? Um, so I made the choice to put that back in. That's playing to my strength. My strength is to make things fun, so that's what I did. Um, and on the same kind of line, go with your gut. I knew that I'd be able to have the dice in my lesson and it'd be fine. So in my gut, put them in. Um, I did love that lesson. I will keep it in my back pocket for decimals for next time. Um, I did have a child with SEND needs in my classroom who was meant to be taken out of the class but they were still in there um, which I quite liked. Their one-to-one -one said that he loved the lesson, he really enjoyed it and gave loads of positive feedback so I did feel really good at the end of the lesson. <sighs> okay so yeah obviously I got the job um, because not, not like a snide way so you know I got the new job. Um, so yeah, I got the new job, I went home after that, it was pretty much done at that point. The one-to-one -one walked you through the front office, I left. Um, and then that afternoon, I got the call to say that I got the job. And I near cried, the Ted near cried, because I'm on the phone like, oh my god, thank you so much. She's like, stop it, you're gonna start me off, I was like, I can't, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I got the job. So now I'm in this kind of weird limbo where I've resigned from my current job and I'm really looking forward to my new job. <laughs> and it's really weird. <laughs> so yeah, um, yesterday I got an email about transition days and my new class name and staff meetings that I can attend. There was one on Wednesday. I didn't get to that one because it was over already, but I can go to the next one because they're all on teams because we're in a pandemic um so i'm really forward to doing that um but yeah let me end this vlog um so i want to do some takeaways of interview um so firstly please prepare for your interview i know that my whole story has been like i winged it and got the job but that's incredibly lucky i don't i don't really know how um how i did this to be completely honest and this is not to be like braggy, but this is the first job I applied for in this whole I need a new job moment of my life. Um, I applied for it, you know, the Monday, the Sunday night, got it, interview on the Monday, got had the interview on Thursday, had the job Thursday night in the space of a week. I had a new job and resigned. It was mad, but it was incredibly lucky. Um, I, I don't know how to say, I don't know how, I don't know what to say about it. It was incredibly lucky. So yeah, prepare for your interviews. Research, look at offset, prep interview questions, just practice, do draft upon draft applications. Um, but just do what you feel you need to do. I won't say I feel like I needed to just bang application, I'll be done. I probably should have done a bit more, but I got just so lucky, just so lucky. Um, so number two, got the job, now what? This is the part that I'm currently in, where it's like, what do I do now? Um, so I have been preparing for my new classroom. I've started making um, things for the classroom. I have been a little creeper, and um, because my new school have got like a virtual tour, and I know I'm in year three now, I've just been sat in the virtual tour, just like scrolling around, looking at the classroom, and just deciding you'll be the math board, you'll be the literacy board, which I know is creepy. I should stop, I'm so excited. Um, I won't say go overboard with the prep for your classroom because you don't know what's gonna go in there yet. I have been communicating with the other year three teacher who is my partner and staying in year, th who's in year three now. And she's been giving me some policies on displays and stuff like that. So if you can contact your new school and ask, you know, ask things. What's the policy look like? What does the display look like? How do you want this done? What's your timetable look like? What's your transition day? because, you know, it's a you to know. Find out while you can. On that note, transition day, start planning for it. Um, my next video is gonna be transition ideas because I am now starting to plan my transition day. I know what I'm doing transition morning, actually. 
but I know kind of the rough time frame that I'll have and I know that in that time frame I need to get to know these children because I don't know them at all um, and I want to give them something to come into you in September something that is inherently theirs so yeah so that's how I got that um, if you are unsuccessful with your interview keep trying keep trying don't give up um, I will say the first thing you should do is ask for written feedback as to why you were unsuccessful because if they can tell you oh, yeah we didn't we didn't you know, we didn't choose you because this that and the other you know what to fix for your next interview so definitely always ask you know where did I go wrong can I have written feedback to let me know where I went wrong so I can improve next time always be thankful for the experience because everything is an experience but yeah okay uh, that's the end of this incredibly rambly video it was a mess but it's it's an organized mess and we love that um if you are new here please consider subscribing to my channel or follow me on instagram which should come up here at daft underscore teachers my next video will be transition ideas covering things like behavior management art projects to do for those kiddies and getting to know you ideas to do i will at some point be doing a first view of school ideas because i'm planning for that as well and of course there will be a new classroom tour because I, I will have a new classroom. Um, I also have a schedule now for videos up on my on my Instagram. There's a highlight called Upload Schedules. I am gonna try and get at least two videos out a week. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna schedule, I'm gonna edit, and I'm gonna be on time. It's it's going to happen. So please consider sticking around to see, you know, the moment I upload my life. It'll be great. Um, I think that's everything I'll take to say goodbye. Goodbye.